So far in our digital scale model of the solar system, we've created two views, a view where we can show the relative sizes of the planets and a view where we can show the relative distances of the planets. We've kind of got two modes and if we keep creating modes, our application is gonna get a little bit hard to navigate and code. So in this tutorial, we're gonna clean things up a little bit by using what's called a state machine. It might seem a little bit complicated at first, but trust me, if you get familiar with this, it's a really robust and strong way to build your applications. And if you're a teacher, educator, or homeschooling parent out there searching for some solar system printable worksheets, then go check the description for a link to some resources that you can use with your group of learners. Let's go statify our planetary application in just a sec. Hello world, it's the Surfing Scratcher here, teacher server programmer, and on this channel, I help curious learners just like you along on your learning journeys. This video is part of a series on building a solar system digital model in Scratch. Go check the card in the top right hand corner right now for previous videos and a link to the starter project down in the description. Okay, so what's this tutorial all about? State machine? Seems a little bit funky. Well, we've got a little application here where we've got some planets in a line that are scaled relative to each other. We've also got down here in a previous video where we created Google Map to visualize the distances between the objects. Now, if you look at this, it's looking a little bit messy. And what would be really nice is to have this turned off so we can look at the scaled version and then have it turned on, but then organize all of our planets down here. And the way I'd like to share with you how I'm gonna do that is called a state machine. There's a card in the top right hand corner that will give you an explanation of the state machine. I'm not gonna go over it in depth in this video because we need to power through it. The benefit of using a state machine is that it organizes your web applications. Not only that, it makes them a little bit more robust and bug free eventually. Having said that, I haven't actually coded this project just yet, so I'm expecting a few little kinks along the way. That's gonna be a great opportunity to record a debugging video. As always, I make some comments of what I'm gonna try and do first and then we'll execute them. So we're gonna be using a state machine to clean it up. We're gonna be making a state variable and variables of different states. These will be our states and then we need some events to respond to them. So let's dive in and execute some of our instructions. I'm gonna do most of the work in the stage bright for this one. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new variable and we're going to call this state. Nice and simple. Now that we've got a state variable selected, I'm gonna create two different states. We're gonna have a distance state for the Google Maps and we're gonna have a scaled state. And I'm gonna name it like this. I'm gonna have a state and underscore just so we know what's going on. There we go. And I'm just gonna set some values. So I'm gonna call this state distance as a text value. I'll duplicate that and just call it scaled. Then I will just attach it to our initiation here of when the green flag is clicked. Then I'm gonna create a my block, a custom block here. We're gonna call it set state. Actually, I might call it set state too. We'll put a colon there, we'll add an input, and this will be the state that we're setting it to. Okay, let's drag it down the bottom here and give ourselves some space. And all this is gonna do is grab another set block. We're gonna get that state variable that we created, and we're going to set it to state. Fairly simple, right? And I'm gonna grab an event, and we're going to broadcast a message. Now the idea with this is, I'm gonna send one message and each of our sprites here are going to receive this event and it will read whatever state we've set it to. And that's how we can change the behavior of each individual sprite. So we need to create a new event name and you wanna name it something that reflects what it actually does. So it might be something like app state changed, state has changed, whatever it is, but you just basically want all the sprites to know that the state has changed. So let's just leave it at that. The last thing we wanna do here is just call our my block when we initiate our application. So we can initiate our application and set an immediate state. And the state I'd like to set it to is scaled. And now to test that this is actually working, I'm gonna go down here to Mercury, jump into the events, when I receive state has changed. And I like to test what's going on. I'm gonna say in Mercury, the state is state. And the reason I'm saying in Mercury is because that's the sprite I'm working in. So I'm actually just testing this out. I'm gonna click the green flag and what I expect is to see a little say block here saying in Mercury, the state is, so let's check it out. And there we are. Mercury is telling us that we're in the scaled state. And we can see that up here with the variables on the screen. The state is scaled and there is the scaled state. Now it doesn't look like we've done much at the moment, but this is quite powerful. Now what we can do that is we can set a relative size of Mercury depending on the state that it's in. So when we're in this scale state, we want Mercury to be this tiny little dot. But when we're in the distance state, we wanna blow it up a little bit bigger because we want Mercury to be a button that we can press along here. You can see that it already is a button. If I click it now, we've got the selected planet as Mercury. So what I reckon we should do is instead of setting our size when the green flag is clicked, 
we're just going to set our size after the state has changed. Because remember, in our stage, we immediately set the state. So this is basically the initialization. Then in our set size block, we can put an if then else statement. And we can say that if the state is equal to scaled, then we can set the size to what we currently have. But if it's not scaled, well, we don't want to set the size to that anymore. That's too small. We don't want it relative. Let's just go, let's go 10 times. Uh, I think we're getting there. We'll go 20 times. Cool. Let's just see how we go with that for now. You can also see that I've moved the planet down here. So we actually want to reset the X and Y positions. So we're just going to go simply to this current X and Y. Then what I'll do, and I'm just going to set Mercury back to that tiny little dot. So we can put it back in our sequence here. And then if the state is equal to scaled, we'll go to that X and Y position. And that's our code. And we can apply this to every other sprite. And before we copy it across to other sprites, I suggest that we make this scaled value a constant because 20 might be too small or too big. And I don't have to go into all these sprites and change that manually. So that's going to be best living in a variable. Let's create a variable. It's going to be a constant. So I'm going to make it all caps because it's not going to change. And I'm going to call it default planet size. And I'm going to stick default planet size in here. Back in the stage, I'm just going to set that constant to 20 because that's what it was when we we're inside Mercury. Awesome. Now we need to test this out. And to test it out, we're going to jump back over to the stage sprite and switch between the states. And to change between our states, we're going to use some keyboard user input. We'll use the numbers. We're going to use the numbers one and two. So when a user presses one on the keyboard, let's set the state to the scaled state. And when the user presses the number two on the keyboard, let's set the state to distance. I'm gonna click the green flag. Now I've pressed one on the keyboard and now I'm gonna press two and I expect Mercury to jump down here and blow up in size. And look, there it does. I'm gonna press number one now and boom, it's gone back to the spot where we want it to be. Later down the track, we're gonna be adding some more states so we can continue to use our number system here. And we can also leave some on-screen feedback to let the user know which state we're currently in. Okay, I'm back over here in the Mercury Sprite and we've reached that pain point of where having these individual sprites is a little bit annoying over using clone because we have to copy this code across to the other sprites. Let's just test it out with Venus first because we don't wanna dump it all on the other sprites and figure out that something's wrong. So. We know that every sprite is just going to need this one, has state change and set size. So I'm going to drag that on top of Venus. And then I'm going to grab the if block of the set size and drag that onto Venus. Then I'm going to jump inside the Venus sprite and I'm just going to delete the when the green flag is clicked because we don't need that anymore. And in the set size, I'm just going to replace it with that code block. Now the thing that we have to be mindful of here is I'll still have Mercury selected. So I just need to change that back to Venus. And the other thing I want to do here is just set the X and Y of Venus in this particular state. So we're currently in the scaled state and we want to go to this X and Y. Let's click the green flag. I'm going to press number two. And you can see that Venus has jumped over the top of Mercury, but I can actually just move it across there like that. And then we can switch out the X and Y's. I'm going to go back to number one now, pressing one on the keyboard and boom, it's jumped back into line. And this looks like it's working. I'm gonna go through and repeat that for all the sprites now, because that looks good. I'm gonna save you time and just magic it. And just before I do that, I'm gonna create another constant here for the default planet size, because I'm not sure if this Y position is going to be the one that we want, because if we adjust the default planet size, then we may wanna change and tweak the Y values. We wanna make them all consistent so they look like they're in a nice straight line. So I'm just gonna create a new constant. I'm gonna call it default planet Y. And then I'm going to set the default planet Y to negative 145. And I just got that value from one of the sprites. I'm gonna jump back over to Mercury now and I'll drag that into the Y position and I'll do the same for Venus. So now if I wanna tweak that value, I just need to do it in one place as opposed to doing it nine times for each of these planets. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and magic that and I'm gonna press two on the keyboard now and watch our state change to distance. And I've got all the planets here lined up beautifully. And then we will press number one on the keyboard and they're back to their scaled state. Some things to consider, just make sure when you drag the when I receive block and the if block across, you change the variable, you bring out and you go to X and Y and you increment the X value. I know that got me a couple of times as I was creating this. Now the last thing that we're gonna do in this video is when we're in this distance state, we wanna show the distance sprite because it's currently hidden. So let's jump over to that sprite. We'll drag out that block that says, when I receive, not selected planet has changed, but the state has changed. Grab out an if then else block, find that comparison operator again, and you guessed it, when the state is equal to distance. We're just gonna keep things nice and simple. We're just gonna show it and you can hide it. 
You can create animations here, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. With any luck, this should work. So I'm gonna press one on the keyboard. We're back to our scale state. We press two, and there you have it. There's our planet distance sprite showing. Now, if I click on any of these sprites, we should transition to Pluto, and you can see everything is updated as it should be. I might just move these variables across because we don't necessarily need them at the moment. And now I can click on all these planets. I can. I notice that Mercury is a little bit tricky to click sometimes, but uh, there we go. There's Venus, there's Earth, and there's Pluto. Now, if I press one on the keyboard, it's hidden, and we're back to our scaled state. And there you have it. That's how you can create a state machine to control the view of your application. The real great benefit about adding this is now that we've got the underlying architecture there, we can go across later and create other states because we're gonna be creating an orbit mode where our planets are orbiting. And we're also gonna be creating a gravity mode, what it would be like if you're on this planet uh, simulating some gravity. So we'll address those in future videos and we're gonna use this state machine to create those states so we can get the planets where we want them. Even if you didn't follow along with me, this is gonna be really powerful to use in your own projects when you build them out. And for those of you with the real keen eye out there, you'll notice that we've sort of got two states happening. We've got an application state, and we've also got like this selected planet state. When we click on the different planets, you can see that we're changing the state of the selected planet. And that's the cool thing about the state machine as well. You can have multiple states. But hey, this can also become a little bit unwieldy. So with great power comes great responsibility. All right, that's it for this video. I'll catch you in the next one.